Hey guys, welcome to the arena and welcome to day two of my Road to Rank 1 challenge. I'm very excited here. I've just been loving this mono white humans deck. And yeah, um, there's no changes here to the deck since yesterday. And there's going to be a link in the description if you want to see the full playlist and um, also descriptions there for the deck list, both on Moxfield and on untapped.gg if you guys want to try out the list. So first of all, if you're new here to my channel, thank you so much for uh, checking in. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. And for my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you guys. So yeah, getting back into it here, just went 5-0 and yesterday. Currently at 83% win rate, 15-3 um, and three so far. So yeah, we're just grinding our way through Diamond 4, and let's jump in. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via Super Thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the... Um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. I had some just absolutely amazing games against um, Boris Convoke yesterday. So if you guys haven't seen that video, um, I would recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. Definitely some of the most fun matches I've had in a while. All right, opening hand looks great. Going to lead out here with Veteran just to get the extra life. Yeah, and I hope you guys have had a nice weekend so far. I know that the, um, the solar eclipse is coming up, so I don't know if anybody's going to go see it, but um, yeah, it should be cool. All right, so let's lead out. I think we want to probably just lead out here with Sentinel. Next turn we can drop Vanguard. Um, if they play something that can trade with Vanguard, I'd prefer to have like the Sentinel out there instead. Um, we could also go like Veteran to get more life going, but I just want to be mana efficient here, so I think I'm just going to lead out with Sentinel. Okay, I guess, um, yeah, that works. I know that the uh, best of one play an event for uh, Standard is coming up uh, this weekend, so I don't know if any of you guys are going to be playing it. I'm going to try it out, see if I can get into the qualifier weekend. I, I know that um, last month I ended up in the top 1,200 for ladder, so going to be getting a little bit of a discount there to get into at least one of the, uh, the play-in events, and then I think the best of three is going to be this coming Friday. So yeah, hey, looks fine. Um, a little bit slow, but hopefully we can get kind of things going here, something on two. Again, just going to lead out here with Sentinel. Don't want to expose Vanguard to possible burn just yet. Looks like they might have to play with fire. Yeah. I 
We could hold Iganjo here, but I really want to get these Night Errants going, so I'm just going to lead out here with Vanguard. Not interested in trading. We'll just take some damage here. Hopefully they don't have extra removal. And then we can get our Knight Errant on the board. Okay, so much for that. Yeah, this hand might be just a little bit too slow against Mono Red. Now we really can't hold out for Knight Errant since we're down to 10. Gonna have to use Iganjo on the etching. Hopefully we can use like Knight Errant to go and find some life gain of some some way, somehow. It's looking pretty rough though. Yeah, unfortunately here we just have to trade. Okay, not dead yet. See if we can hold on here, maybe. That's probably going to do it, yeah, unfortunately. Because <sighs> even if we, like, Knight Errant to find, you know, one of our um, Lunark veterans, just not enough. Just hit in the air, so that's going to do it, unfortunately. So maybe that hand was a little bit too slow. Possibly should have considered mulliganing. It's just hard to throw back a hand where you've got three land, but... So it goes. All right, opening hand looks great. Lots of stuff to do. We're going to lead out with Novice Inspector, just so that when we play Warden, we already have three permanents in play, so they, we can at least get the Scry, even if they have removal. Okay, that's a nice pickup here. Um, yeah, we just want to get Warden going. Even though Thalia is really good, they're going to be playing a creature next turn. So we're happy to get Warden going here. And that's a perfect draw here for us. Now, if they have like... Their 2 2, one of their 2 2 haste creatures, we could potentially hold back here um, and then try to do like the double block, which is certainly relevant. Otherwise, we could just try to push and sort of stay aggressive. But I think since they're not going to have extra mana, there's a decent chance that they have like a Feldon or something. 
and it might be worth trying to make that trade and just sort of take some steam off of them. However, we are in the play, so it's possible we're just pushing here and then just taking whatever they throw at us. I don't know, I, I could kind of see both sides of it. Like, Feldon gives them some cards, so that's not amazing. Um, and then they're trading for our Warden, and our Warden really does get out of hand, and like, they kind of have to respect it. So I think we just push here. Thinking about it more, like, Warden is a huge threat from the other side of the table. When I was running Mono Red last month, I definitely like feared their warden if they were able to get up to four toughness. Yeah, and here we just take the three. Especially since we've got these clue tokens, we can really kind of lean on um, getting warden going. Now we're happy to go Lunark Veteran into uh, Thalia just to kind of slow down all their spells. And we're going to be tapping the uh, veteran here just because we're never planning to block with that. Especially since they're going to have Kumano faces Kakazan out. Uh, that's a nice top deck. And we can now go ahead and get our warden all the way up to three counters and start bashing in the sky. So they're representing either Lightning Strike or Monstrous Rage. And we're at 16, we've got Lunark Veteran going. So I think we just take this. Um, I guess they could use like Witch Stalkers if they've got it. But I think we're still better off just trying to build the toughness up on our Warden here. But if they, take, if they have Witch Stalkers, it's gonna take all their mana. Okay, so if we just push, we can push for 14. Actually, never mind, this is just lethal because we can use Copper Coat to get there. Yeah, six, nine, 11, 15, exactly. All right, opening hand looks great. Again, gonna be leading out with Inspector first, just so that we have uh, Warden come in as the third permit in order to ensure we get that scry. I think here, since they're going to be probably pushing with a 3-3 if they have like fell down or something, that we just want to go ahead and push for the one point of damage here. Instead of trying to sit back with a 2-3. Because like we have to expect that they've got fell down or something like that. Yeah, and this will be a 3-3, so... Definitely want to attack last turn and not miss out on the point of damage. Okay, so Knight Aaron's fight is cool and everything, but Adeline is a complete and total beating. Yeah, and that's we definitely want to keep that on top.
All right, so they're representing Monstrous Rage here. And I guess if they have Monstrous Rage, they're pushing 10 damage. We drop to six. Next turn, let's see, we're hitting for four, five, 10, 11, 12, 13. Not quite lethal. I guess we could draw into potential lethal. So I think, since we've got another Adeline here, I'm willing to trade. So I think we just like force him to have it. Yeah, I think I'd rather kill the etching here. Yeah, and they've got the play with fire, and that's fine. We slow them down a little bit. And I think I want to get Veteran going. Adeline is, is great also, but let's get Veteran going. Yeah, and that's going to be enough. Yeah, really, really happy with this list so far. Just been so impressed with um, March of Otherworldly Light against Boros Convoke and kind of the utility that it has against um, Azorius Control as well. And then the Sun Gold Sentinels have been completely fantastic against World Souls Rage, the teamer, teamer deck. And again, more utility against Blue White Control. I've also been really happy with moving um, two copies of um, Brutal Cathar into the deck just to have that extra added removal. And the four Seed of Iganjo, or the four Iganjo Seed of the Empire, has just been completely clutch. Like, I would never run less than four of this. Like for the minor mana inconvenience that it poses, the fact that it gives you more reach and more removal is so huge. All right, um, let's see there, Thalia. So Iganjo gets around Skrelv, which is kind of nice, and so we can represent that. Um, actually, let's see. The other possibility, I guess we could Brutal Cathar their Skrelv, or we could just drop our own Adeline. But I think that there's value in... And I'm not going to play the extra land here just to like make them forget possibly that the Legend Rule helps... Iganjo be a little cheaper, so I think I'm just going to push with both and see what they do. Problem is, is they probably just like... Yeah, actually, I'm okay trading Thalia's here. I think this works. And then if like they don't block, we can just play 
either Brutal Cathar or Adeline. Probably Adeline. I guess we could have also gone for Knight Errant here, but I wanted to be a little kind of... I wanted to grow Initiate. Might have been better just to go Knight Errant, but yeah, they're just going to take it. So there's a lot of different ways could have ran this turn. The problem is like if we go like Knight Errant and they just have like Brutal Cathar, yeah. I felt like there was a chance we could have finessed out killing their Adeline here, but it didn't work. So I think we want to hold Cathar, just... It's not super useful right now, and getting Adeline down is good. Alright, so they probably have maybe Knight Errant here. They could also be representing Iganja, which would be rough, but I think we have to go for it. We don't want this to like spiral out of control. Yeah, and they've got the Iganjo, unfortunately. And Knight Errant to go with it. Oof, it's pretty rough. So yeah, maybe it would have been better just to go for Knight Errant there, but might have I might have just tried to get a little bit too fancy with my play. Um, yeah, now there's like we could try to push and again try to like use Iganjo on their four four, but they're pushing so much damage back. I think we just have to kind of get something going. Now they are tapped out, so we can get their Adeline, which is great. Um, we don't have enough to also do Knight Errant, but I think we have to take advantage of this and go for the Brutal Cathar play. I'm a little bit loath to get rid of these Iganjos, um, but it like does help Knight Errant get easier to push out. Ugh. I think I'm going to lay one down, make them think that I'm out of the Aganjo, and then be able to blow them out with it later. So the question here is, do we double block Knight Errant or try to trade Thalia's? Um, I think we kind of have to go for the Thalia trade just because we want to be able to get Knight Errant going. And we're taking a ton of damage, but... That's close. Yeah, I think going down to one creature does not sound great. We're definitely on the back foot, but maybe we can make something happen here. So the other possibility is we could wait for Brutal Cathar to flip and the nice thing there is that they won't be able to push stuff through with Skrelv because then we'll have a red creature um, otherwise like we're in danger of them just like Skrelving out to victory so I think that actually is the play and then next turn we can like lay two creatures and just try to get something probably the Skrelv this way we still got Iganjo going and I think that's the play Okay, they've got Adeline also. So 
So the nice thing here is we can get Mishra's Foundry going and then also use the mana from it to cast Iganjo. So I think, yeah, we'll use Moonrage Brute to block the Hopeful Initiate. All right, first let's go ahead and get Foundry going. Actually, you know what, that might have been wrong, because now, ah, that was a mistake. Forgot that we have to pay an extra mana because of their copper coat. Yeah, uh, that was an error. Um, okay, so now, unfortunately, we can't use the Iganjo on their Knight Errant. <sighs> Yuck. All right, so in this case, I think we just block like this. We take five. It's not ideal. Yeah, otherwise we would have been able to like take three, use the Aganjo, pay the extra one, get the Knight Errant. So that was a misplay. Okay, now we can Thalia plus Brutal Cathar get the flip, use one of them to get Skrelv and the other one. <sighs> Problem is the timing is bad. They can use the timing to protect the Adeline or the Copper Coat. This is not ideal. Um, The other thing we could do is we could actually attack. Actually, attacking is interesting because then we could use Hopeful Initiate to blow up their Skrelv. But then we don't know to have enough mana to use Brutal Cathar. Don't think there's a good way out of this, unfortunately. All right, let's see. First we tap this for mana. Do we want the, do we want to target the um, Copper Coat first and then the Skrelv just for the order of the stack? But of course they can respond with Skrelv, which is annoying. Although, actually, I guess they could have just Skrelled for Adeline instead, and that would just be automatically game. It's pretty much game anyways, but... <sighs> yeah, I think, yeah, now we're just super dead. Um... I guess we can go to one, but then, like, it's just completely dead. So, yeah. Misplay there um, on the Ganjo a bit earlier, but definitely on the back foot that game. All right, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are currently at 78% win rate. 18 wins and five losses. 
So yeah, still very happy with the deck overall. Um, did pick up a couple losses today, ended up going um, three and two, but still very happy. Um, the win rate here against Mono Red is still north of 50, which feels great. And then a lot of good matchups here so far. Um, did take a loss in the mirror, but pretty contested game there. So anyways, we will see you guys here for the next one. Thank you so much again for watching, and you guys are awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you.